For example, when I was preparing for my Spanish oral, Today, I will be sharing my top 5 resources for learning a new language. Whether you're trying to learn a new language this year, or you just want to improve your grades in your language classes, I hope these resource ideas will be helpful for you. First up is the easier for school learning, using Google Translate to translate articles. This first type is pretty self-explanatory. When you're given an article in class and you either have to pick out verb tenses that you don't know or vocabulary that you're unfamiliar with, what I would do is instead of just reading through the article and looking for these words or phrases, I would actually just throw it into Google Translate. Using Google Translate, you can scan a picture of the article and that will translate the entire article into the language that you prefer. Ideally, you would read through the article first and try to translate it internally, but if you don't have the time or the patience to do that, just stick it into Google Translate. Read through the translation first, but also make sure that you read through the original article afterwards. This will be helpful for two main reasons. For one, you'll have a general idea of what the article is talking about, and you won't be going in blind. Secondly, you can much more easily print out phrases that you don't know and match them up with the translated version that you've already read. Having the basic knowledge and understanding about what the article is talking about will make it much more easier for you to pick out new phrases, but more importantly, remember these phrases because you have a general idea of what the article is already talking about. This will also be easier for you to learn new bone hack because instead of actually using a dictionary or individually looking up words that you don't know, using Google Translate to translate the entire article in one go drastically reduces this friction. Just translate everything and now you can refer back to it when you come across something that you don't know. So moving on to the most enjoyable and the cornerstone to my language learning, dramas. It's effective for learning almost all the different forms of the language. From the countless number of Chinese dramas I've watched, I've learned how to read, speak, and understand Chinese. The reason why dramas are so effective to use is because they're one, enjoyable to watch, and they also allow you to listen to the correct pronunciation of the different words spoken by native speakers when you're watching that drama. Assuming you have subtitles on, you'll hear the exact proper pronunciation for each of the words you hear and see on the screen. Ideally, find a drama that has subtitles for the language that you're currently learning and a language that you already know. So if I was learning Chinese from the beginning, I would find a drama with both Chinese and English subtitles. If that isn't an option, however, prioritize finding a drama in the language that you're trying to learn with subtitles in that language. For me personally, I started watching dramas first with Chinese and English subtitles, and I eventually graduated to just watching dramas with Chinese subtitles, even when I didn't fully understand all the characters in the subtitles. Switching to watching dramas with just Chinese subtitles was really what drastically improved my Chinese, so don't feel intimidated by watching a drama with that native language's subtitles only. An alternative would be turning on English subtitles for videos that you normally watch on, say, YouTube or Netflix. For example, when I was preparing for my Spanish oral, what I would actually do is when I watched Chinese dramas on YouTube, I would turn on the Spanish subtitles instead of opting for Chinese subtitles. And even though my brain was kind of trying to process from Chinese to Spanish instead of usually from English to Spanish or Spanish to English, it was actually a very interesting way for me to remember new phrases and vocabulary in Spanish because I could draw connections between two new languages in comparison to trying to find the English translation for a Spanish word that I didn't know. Finding unique connections between Spanish and Mandarin helped cement my knowledge of some new Spanish phrases. Even though my brain did get a bit bombarded when I was procrastinating by watching Chinese dramas, I still felt kind of productive because I was practicing my Spanish. 
So that's a potential way for you to work on a new language while you're also just relaxing and watching a YouTube video. This third resource is the least time consuming, music or audiobooks. So listening to music and audiobooks is likely going to be the least time consuming, but it can still be very effective for learning a new language. Ideally, listening to songs in the new language that you want to learn in an app that shows the lyrics. That's the most important part for using music to learn a new language. I know that you could use Spotify because they usually show the lyrics for the songs. And if you're trying to learn an Asian language, so Cantonese, Mandarin, even Japanese or Korean, you can look into Chinese streaming music apps such as QQ Music or Kugo. If music isn't really your cup of tea, try using audiobooks. There's actually audiobooks out there specifically made for teaching people how to speak a new language. You can pause the audiobook and try the exercises and practices of the audiobook and see if that works for you better than music because that would be a more active way of learning a new language. There are audiobooks for a variety of languages and you can use apps such as Libby or Overdrive in order to check out these audiobooks for free. Just dedicate 15 to 20 minutes every day to listen to music or audiobooks on your commute and do this daily. A little will go a long way. So moving on to my fourth resource. This was the most effective resource for me. Anki. So I feel that Anki is the most effective for learning vocabulary for a new language and actually not using Quizlet because of the active recall and spaced repetition incorporated into the Anki algorithm. You can make your own flashcards for the vocabulary that you're currently learning in class or, and what I like to do, is actually find a pre-made deck. In order to find these pre-made decks, just look up pre-made Anki deck for Spanish or Chinese and something will likely pop up. This is especially helpful in my opinion for learning how to write in a language, especially for languages like Mandarin and Cantonese where you have to write the Chinese characters. When I was preparing for a Chinese interview which had a writing portion, what I actually did is I found a pre-made Anki deck with the 5,000 most common Chinese words. And because Anki requires you to actively recall information, I would use these flashcards to try to actively recall how to write specific characters instead of simply recognizing what a character was and what it meant in English. Using these flashcards to quiz myself really taught me how to write a lot more Chinese words because usually I know how to read Chinese, but I don't necessarily know how to write it. The only downside is that Anki has a slightly steeper learning curve, so Quizlet might work better for you depending on your ultimate goal. If you're just trying to memorize a few quick vocabulary words, Quizlet will probably be enough for you to pass your class. However, if you want to optimize for long-term learning, I really highly recommend using Anki. Once you figure out how to use Anki and how to make Anki flashcards, you can also apply and use Anki for your other classes. Currently, I'm using Anki for my med classes too. Finally, my fifth resource for learning a new language is also the most intensive, and that's reading a book. The most intensive resource for you to use if you really want to level up your language skills is reading a book written in that language. Reading is the ultimate way of mastering a language because it goes beyond the vocabulary and grammar rules. Reading will reflect that culture's values, traditions, and customs. If you're just starting out and want to work with something that you're more familiar with, find a book that's been translated into that language. For example, if you've read Harry Potter in your native language and you're, say, trying to learn Spanish, what I would recommend is that you look for a version of Harry Potter that has been translated into Spanish. Use this for popular books because most of these books that are 
read by readers universally will be translated into various different languages. Whether it's translated to that language or originally written in that language, reading will drastically improve your language skills. During my trips to China, I would actually often visit bookstores, and I would buy these short stories written in Chinese. Even though there were many words I didn't know, I would usually just skip over them and plow through with the book. Over time, by using contest clues, having repeated exposure, or actually just looking up the word using a dictionary, I drastically improved my Chinese comprehension beyond just vocabulary and grammar rules. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, check out my other videos that I've made for students, and if you're specifically studying for a language oral, check out this video here on how I prepared for my Spanish SL oral for IB. Make sure you give this video a like and hit that subscribe button down there, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!